smart means business is definitely here and we are heading into uh, uh, topical discussion and the other topical discussion of the day where we are going to analyze some few things in regarding the, the issue of Dr. Patrick Bitature uh, venturing into the education system in Uganda and of what significance it means to the education as well as the business when it comes to that particular one. And in studio with me I do have um, an education consultant, not only an education consultant, but also someone venturing into the business part of it. And uh, it is high time, I will definitely say. You're most welcome, madam. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, if you out there would want to know who do we have in studio, and I think it is the second time we're having you as well. Yes. Mm. And uh, thank you for hosting me once again. My name is Dorothy Wegoye Chimuli. And today I come here as the principal marketing and public relations officer of Uganda Technology and Management University, Otamo. Mm. But as well, like you have said, that uh, I also venture into business, so you find that business and education coexist. Sure thing. And that's why in that capacity, I am here today mm. to deliberate with you. All right, now let's first talk about the impact of uh, online lectures to the students and how much how much does it lay on board in terms of the employment market because uh, competing favorably in the market needs someone who is well equipped in terms of uh, the practical aspect because business needs someone who's already into a practical setting what is the is there a difference between online and uh, the other face-to-face -face interaction that we've been having uh, for starters i must say that this change here is very good and is very embraced. Why? Because that is where the world is going. We can't continue sticking in the traditional ways of doing things, of lecture, student, physical appearance, mm -hmm. when the world is dictating that we must engage in the virtual space. So when it comes to Uganda Technology and Management University, this was long embraced even before COVID. Mm -hmm. We continued to lecture, we continued to train, we continued to mentor our students online. When COVID came in, we were already in the process. While others were beginning and trying to settle in, Wutamu had journeyed through. And in terms of the applicability to the world today, we must acknowledge that we are now global. We may be living in Uganda, but we are bigger than Uganda. So we must be ready to work in ways that go beyond the borders. And there is no better option than utilizing the virtual space, than utilizing online. Mm. And I must say that when it comes to this, we have students from all over Africa. We have students from South Africa, we have students from Kenya, we have students mm. from Sudan, we have students from Nigeria. Mm. The question is how have, been, how have these students been studying? They have been doing it online. Mm. And in terms of readiness for the markets, we are growing and intellectually we must grow. One of the things we em emphasize is innovation one of the things we emphasize is creative thinking. So in the application of things, mm. you must be ready to create. You must be ready to work and deliver in the virtual space. Mm. You must be ready to innovate in the virtual space. Gone are the days where you had to be present, you had to be physically there with gadgets mm. to show that you have done something. All that was done physically is now being done online. Okay. Now, I would want us to head to Dr. Tabitha Ture, yes, uh, engaging into uh, education now. We, most of the people, when, when, the, when you mention of the name Dr. Patrick Bitature, the first idea that comes into their mind is now uh -huh. I'm talking millions and billions of money. Uh -huh. What does he bring on board and what is his impact in regards to the education system in Uganda? Is he going to help out in any way? Uh, definitely, uh, Dr. Bitature Patrick is bringing a lot on board. We are living in times where the hopeless must be made hopeful. Many people don't see the future. You get it? But what does the name itself tell you? Most of those 
that read about him, that know about him, and hear him speak, even before talking about his position as a chancellor in Wotam. We must know what is his name associated with. And his name is associated with one, inspiration. If you have been privileged to listen to him, his mentorship programs, his advisory programs, and the youth of today, we must acknowledge that he is an inspiration to the youth, to the young generation. He creates hope. Where you feel hopeless, once you listen to him speak, you will know that there is hope. You get it? Another thing that he brings on board is wisdom. You know, we oftentimes live in the blame game. But when you listen to him, you will get out of that shell, dress into another shell, and start thinking about yourself. How do you get yourself out of this situation? If you look at his business ventures in themselves, what does it tell you? There is a story behind every success of his. If he has made it, I read about his background. His father died when he was 13 years old. You get it? At 13 years old, he became the breadwinner. Most often times when little boys at 13 years old lose their parents, they get into business, no education, no nothing. Mm. You get it? But at 13, he ventured into business. He was able to study through all the stages while meeting these responsibilities for the family. But today he's a doctor. Mm. Isn't that a story? It, is a it tells you, do not give up. Amidst all situations, you must be focused. Once you are focused and you aim for getting knowledge, then you will get where you want to get. As a vice chancellor, this is what he's bringing on board. Mm -hmm. Because the students that we are taking out, the students that we are graduating and preparing for the world, must borrow a practical example. And he has given us that practical example. Mm -hmm. And how can I also put this? There is a difference between riches and there is a difference between wealth. Mm -hmm. Where do you categorize him? I would I put him in wealth because it is sustaining. Why has, how has he sustained it? The knowledge. We need to borrow a leaf. Why? Because as Otamu, we are creating, we are breeding job creators, not job seekers. Mm -hmm. He has been able to create. He has been able to grow in that creation. We need to borrow that leaf. You get it? Mm -hmm. Three. His businesses are not only national, they've gone regional. He has networked beyond continents. You get it? So we need to dispense this knowledge down to those that need to be who he is mm -hmm. tomorrow. But one thing I like about his name is that he is selfless. You get it? Mm -hmm. Even amid all his schedules, he has said yes to be the Chancellor of Uganda Technology and Management University. Go and look at his profile. You get it? Mm. So this is a spirit of selflessness that he's bringing to Otam. And this is a leaf that many that believe have reached must borrow. Mm. You get it? So that name alone is bringing a lot. He has created a brand. You get it? How beautiful is it to be associated with that brand mm -hmm. by virtue of him being a chancellor at Uganda Technology and Management University. Mm -hmm. But last but not least, mm -hmm. he's down to earth. You get it? Okay. He is down to earth and he is humble. As a PRO, I took up office last year. When we were trying to organize for a graduation ceremony, I had the privilege of briefly interacting with him. You get it? That was on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. But the way he responds, you would not even put him in the category in which he is. As a very wealthy it? man. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, 
the name itself, the association with that name is an inspiration. Oftentimes when people are looking for chancellors, they look at certain titles. You get it? But what did Wotamu look at? Wotamu looked at a practical title where it's not just what you say, but you are implementing what you're telling us to do. And that was a consideration because that is where the world is going to. yes mm. now let's uh, as we are trying to to, to to wind up with this particular situation i want yes. to understand as uh, institutions are having business courses that are on board but one would actually say when a businessman engages into the business oh. um, is it giving an opportunity for the business students to actually start getting into to actually avail themselves opportunities to work for the businessman in his different ventures mm. is there a chance i think him being the coming on board as the chancellor is not necessarily mm. to offer job opportunities you get it yes but it is an opportunity for them to know how the world works what is the expectation of the world as they are getting there mm -hmm. how can we prepare this young generation to meet the world because meeting the world is not finding an open door and saying because i am here here is the open door then you're not allowing someone to grow but how can you learn from what i have to open doors for yourself and even become bigger and greater at those doors that you open this world is so big and so broad and so wide all people need is the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like I have said, he's a businessman, but highly knowledgeable. You get it? And that is the knowledge that he has to trickle down to the young generation. Mm -hmm. He's not saying, come and work for a salary. You get it? Mm -hmm. He is saying, let me teach you how, how to, to make your business, how to go up the ladder such that you can be impactful in your life's journey the way i am impacting others and that explains all the mentorship programs that he has mm. if you go and look at his youtube he's really teaching people how to grow their businesses how to sustain their businesses you get it he is telling you do not sleep arise and make a difference mm. and like i said even before he speaks the fact that he's at Wotam, that is an inspiration to the students. You get it? Because they have, brought, they have brought a practical personality on board. He comes with practice. He has implemented. He does what he preaches. And that's what we need to inspire others. others. Yes. yes. Mm. And uh, lastly, as we're trying to, to end up with this uh, discussion, I want to understand, where do you see, wh what is your view on the education system in Uganda and where do you see it in the coming years as we're trying to wind up with the show? As we wind up, mm -hmm. I think, uh, one, COVID has taught us that we need to change. You get it? Mm -hmm. We need to get in a space of specialization and make and become better at what we specialize in. Mm -hmm. We need to stop generalizing. You get it? Mm -hmm. And secondly, we need to prepare the young children, the young generation in readiness for the world. And you can only prepare when you specialize. I'll give an example. Uh, a 13-year-old is going to S1. You're doing 18 subjects. There's a combination of sciences, there's a combination of arts. But at the end of the day, you get it? What is the direction of this child? You get it? Is it worth it to take up all those subjects? Mm -hmm. Or is it necessary to groom them from an early age? Such that by the time they reach higher education, where they will meet the Dr. Bitatures of this world, they are adequately prepared to embrace what they have for them. Mm -hmm. You get it? So the issues of the education system in Uganda must be addressed from the roots. We cannot start addressing it at higher level. We must start addressing it from the roots, and then we climb up. 
such that by the time someone is reaching the higher education, the university, you get it, they are ready at least up to 70%. Mm -hmm. Why? The world is going tech. And I'm not saying that you must engage in sciences to do tech. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying that every component of the employment world is not running away from the virtual space and technological advancements. So why do you prepare a lawyer? Is there a foundational course to be able to be more purposeful beyond your nation? Mm -hmm. You get it? So the issues of specialization, and that is the beauty I love with Uganda Technology and Management University, and the name speaks for itself. Regardless of the program that you take, they must be a foundational course that introduces you to the tech world and makes you purposeful beyond your community, beyond your nation, and beyond your region. So specialization is the way to go. All right. And uh, definitely specialization being the way to go means you need to make sure you invest more in yourself to make sure that what you have specialized in is going to help you out and you're going to develop more so with your special, your special an uh, entity in that particular regard and of course as the education system in uganda or the education sector in uganda is still awaiting for the president to actually lift the lockdown on the schools and see face-to-face -face interactions in classrooms uh, returning a number of institutions are actually carrying on with the online and uh, definitely to see that within the next few years we may actually even cut off uh, the face-to-face -face interactions and mainly focus on the online classes or lectures in that regard. Of course, we are talking more of uh, Dr. Patrick Bitaturi, the CEO, Simba Group of Companies, and uh, of course, his impact and what he's going to lay on board in terms of education. I'm Jerome Paul Sonko on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and this is Smart Means Business. It's a goodbye. Point 24, Driving Business.